Okay, so finally made it to Monaco and I'm gonna do a little dock walk around the marina. You see my car here. It's, uh, it's about 30 degrees, so it's uh, ideal for walking long distances. But anyway, here we go. So we're gonna take a walk. I'm just gonna walk through this car park first because there's some nice cars, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the yachts today. Very nice. Anyway, so this is, this is where the bigger boats dock. This is where I was docked last year. So today we've got uh, two of the regulars of Monaco. We've got Atlantis 2, which is owned by the people who actually own the marina, so I'm told. The owner, the, the guy who had this built is actually, actually died and it's owned by his family now. It really moves. The, uh, the owners come for about two weeks a year, take the boat out. So it's kept ready to go, but it really moves. It wasn't here yesterday, actually, when I came in. Uh, I came in last night, so it was out, but it's back this morning. And then next door to it, we've got Lady Maura. Now the story behind this is, I, and I'm a bit vague on the details, but the story goes that this was actually owned by some prince, Arab prince or king maybe, I don't know. And he decided to give it to his lawyer. So he, he gave him a yacht. This is also not moved very often. This was here most of the time I was here last year. It did go out for about a month, so it is used. But when you consider the cost to keep one of these things, uh, it's quite remarkable that they don't use them so much. So speaking of cost, cost to dock your, what is it, 80 meter yacht in Monaco? Well, it's depending on who you know, of course, it's about 40 to 50,000 euros a month. Um, so that's your cost of, that's just your docking fees. So on top of that, you've got your fuel. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do I need fuel if I'm not moving? Well, you'd still need to run the generators for power. Uh, it's possible that they might be running on shore power. I can't see the cables right now. This box here, right in front here, this is a shore power box. And that's where they plug in the cables so they can run, so they can turn off the generators. So, there they are on, sh oh that's water is it? Hello! Magandango Maga! <laughs> so, I think that's water they've got running there. So they've got, yeah, so the, this black cable on Atlantis 2, the one that's tied up underneath, that's a shore power cable. Yeah, that's shore power. So then they're not using generators. So the guys over there that I just said hello to, that they are Filipinos, their crew. So I said hello to, I said good morning to them in, in Tagalog. I know a few words. All right, so, so yeah, so the, so the, it's expensive to run a yacht. So it's, like I said, it's 40 to 50,000 euros for the docking fees and fuel would be about for a yacht of this size, Lady Mora size, probably about 30,000 euros a month to run generators, even in port. So then on top of that, you've got, uh, you've got your crew wages. So if you're on the side of the ship this size, the yacht this size, you're probably looking at about, 50, about 20 to 25 crew. 
So you've got all of that. They're mostly Filipinos from what I can see. So they're, 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 they hire Filipinos because it's less expensive. Not to say that they're not good crew, but the main reason is because it's less expensive. Um, so you've got crew fees, then you've got food. So you've got to feed them obviously three meals a day. Um, usually looking at between 10 and 14 euros per crew per day. So yeah, so it mounts up. Then you've got, when you, when, like if you see forward of the, of the bow, you can see all the lines going into the water. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, so those lines there, they go underwater and they're fixed to fix, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they fix them to the ground on the, uh, on the seabed. Now, every time they come in, they drop an anchor. You can see the anchor's dropped. And they also tie all those lines, and that's to stop the boat from moving sideways if, if the current gets strong. So they tie those down. So, they, so the, the port provides um, divers, and they come in. Now, each time those divers come out, that's 1,500 euros. So you come in, 1,500 euros. You leave, 1,500 euros. Okay, so we've got another boat here. So, oh, the other one thing to mention is the flag. That one's flying a Bahamas flag. I can't remember, no, I can't see it properly. I think it's the Bahamas. So the flags are basically a flag of convenience. They don't really mean anything anymore. They're just usually a tax dodge. So they register it somewhere where there's no taxes. Uh, home port's on, probably on the door that's open, so I can't read it. So I think that's the Bahamas flag. This this boat over here, which name I don't I don't know which I don't know the name of this boat right now. I've never seen it before, but that flag on the back of that one that's the Marshall Islands. Where is the Marshall Islands? I hear you say. It's a good question, and they are in this. They're in the Pacific, the Northern Pacific, and it's like there's like lots of small islands, and uh, yeah, and the, that's the only reason that they're famous, for, as far as I know, is because uh, lots of ships register there. For a tax dodge. So, yeah, I don't know the name of this boat, and it doesn't have it written on the side. It's a Fed ship, which is a Dutch shipbuilders, which was one of my old boats was a Fed ship. So I'm walking to the stern to try and see the name, but I'm not sure what I will be able to. No. Interesting. So. They have these yachts for anonymity, you know? So they want to, you want privacy and you want to be able to control that privacy. So uh, hire some crew, the crew work on board. They have their own crew quarters and their guests have the run of the boat. So they can, they can uh, you know, the, the crew are trained to be very discreet, they keep out of the guest areas whenever possible. Yeah, I can't see the name on this boat. Um, so you will have all your own exits and entrances. You know, you, you might have to come up through the deck area to go ashore, which is what they've got here. So, but that's the only time. So, fenders are out, tied up alongside. You can see the different lines, aft lines, spring lines, these spring lines. I can tighten them, pulls the ship in to the boat, stops it moving around. It's got a little, little gangway there. And then you can see here at the front, those portholes, those round portholes there at the bottom. At least some of them will be crew cabins. Uh, I doubt all of them will be. Possibly some of them might be the crew mess. So you'll have a few windows for crew mess or portals, and then you'll have crew cabins. And then they'll probably be the same on the other side. And that's where the crew are. So that's a, that's a lower deck. So there'll be a deck below that, at least one, maybe two. Below the water line, engine room, possibly. Uh, and then you've got tank deck, which is where you keep all your uh, ballasts. And then you can see the forward of the f end porthole there, you've got the anchor pocket. 
trying to zoom in there, but there we go. So there's your anchor pocket. Anchor's uh, stowed. The, uh, the anchor on the other side, on the port side, will probably be down. No. We'll zoom back out. Alright, so. So let's have a look at Lady Mara. We're just going to talk technical here. So we've got life rafts, as you can see, they're stowed. They're uh, inflatable life rafts. They've got two types of in inflation on them. They've got the, well, let's say there's two ways to inflate them. Well, there's one way to inflate it, which is through a gas canister, but there are two ways to launch it, should I say. Basically one is you launch it manually by lowering it down and pulling the, ca the cable to inflate it and then you uh, put crew in it and then you lower it down to the water. Second way is if the ship goes down and they don't have, for whatever reason, they don't have a chance to, to inflate them, they have a hy hydrostatic release, which you can't see from here. I, I can see it, but it's, it's too hard to see on the camera. Basically, that at the bottom of the raft of the, of the case, there we go. Bottom of the case, there's a little yellow thing, and that's the hydrostatic release, and that's set to a certain depth. So as the boat goes down and it gets to a certain depth, that will activate and it will cut the line that secures it to the boat, and then the 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 um, the canister will float up to the top, and there'll be a cable attached to the canister, and then as it re as it gets fully extended, the can the cable will pull on the canister which will open it and then it will inflate then it will float up to the top and then it will self erect and then uh, the crew can get in it if they're not already in it, uh, in another one so down there you've got obviously they've got a boat out there out of the tender garage it looks like well it could be the rescue boat but it looks a bit a bit too posh for a rescue boat actually so So up on top here on this boat, which is named remains a mystery so far. If I go up there, if you look up, you've got technology. So how do they keep in touch with the world? So basically up there, you've got satellite. So you've got antennas. The one on the top of the mast is most likely internet. So they'll have a service provider like uh, Maritime Telecommunications Network or Omni Access. These are these are companies that do this kind of thing. But that's like your Virgin or your Verizon or your uh, Comcast provider, and uh, those are connected to satellites in the sky or in space, should I say? That sit on the. That sit on uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? They're basically in stationary orbit. Orbit. So they move with the planet as the planet moves. So they're always in the fixed position. So they'll have a uh, they'll have a fixed uh, coordinate, like you know, 37 east or 127 west, etc. So we always know where they are. So we can connect. With, so if we lose a, the satellite, we can just track it, program it back to the spot where it should be, and it picks up the signal. The one below it that will be TV, TVRO, and that stands for TV. Uh, receive only. So the one up top, that's a VSAT, that's a communi that uh, communicates in both ways, so it transmits and receives for internet. And the one below is receive only, so there'll, there'll be one on either side of the mast, because the because as the boat moves, the mast gets in the way and then you get blockage. So as the, the antenna inside, so inside of that dome, you've got basically an antenna like the ones you see on the side of a house, but bigger, and it's on a, it's, it, it obviously it moves. So as the and it's, and it's fixed to the stationary orbit satellite. So it, it's constantly pointing in the same direction. So as the boat turns, then the things get in the way like the mast and then it goes into blockage. So I have another one on the other side, which is also tracking the same antenna or it could be tracking a different antenna. And as you go into blockage on one, the other one just, it just switches over to the other one and then it carries on seamless. So there's always uh, a signal. And they do that because 
you can't fit all of the antennas at the top of the mast. The one at the top of the mast will have very little or, if, or, or no, no blockage at all because it's right at the top, there's nothing in the way. So the only thing that could get in the way is if they dock somewhere where there's high mountains or, you know, and, and the, it all depends on the elevation as well of the antenna, so how it's pointing up or down. You see the one over there, the one in the background, whoops, hang on. The white boat over there. This one has a massive golf ball on it. That's a 3.4 meter antenna. And that's for TV, or it could be for internet, but it's most likely for TV. It has a better signal around the world. So, as you can see here, the guys are busy washing down their deckhands, and that is pretty much the deckhand's life. Wash down and wash again. You see the guy on the back here. When they're in port, they wash. Clean, buff, that's it, really. Eat. <laughs> this is nice. The big gangway there. So you can see all the cables here. These are all, this is shore power cables. So that blue one I said earlier was probably water. This, there's the shore power cables there. Yeah. So obviously they, they're gonna get charged for shore power as well. So I don't know how much that is. But we go back over here. This is where we were docked last year. My old boat's not here right now. And you can see there, this unit here. That is shore power for Atlantis 2. And this one here is the water supply. And they go off onto the boat. This one's got a Bermuda flag on it. And this is one of the few yachts actually that has actually has fixed tenders. So it has actual tenders that launch from davits. You don't see that on yachts very often. Only usually the very big boats have it. Not even Lady Mora has it. So they, they just have inflatable life rafts. I'm gonna walk over to these other boats here. This boat in front of us here, it's alongside. That is uh, the one that's the big one, the yacht. That's called MY Owner. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's spelled O-N-A. That was here last year when I was here as well, on and off. Well, at least we can get down here. My plan was to bring my car down here, park it on the marina, and uh, get a shot with, the, with Monaco in the background, but these boats have been here the whole time, so. Anyway, you can see on the front of this boat. I'll zoom in. All right, so there's all those satellite antennas. So they've got lots of antennas. So they've got four on the lower deck there, and then they've got two up the top. The two up top will be at the uh, internet again, two, because that's not at the highest point. So, so two's for redundancy. And they've got four television antennas, which suggests to me that they probably are tracking two different satellites at once because you need two antennas to track one satellite because of redundancy so they've got four so they're probably tracking maybe a european satellite and maybe a russian satellite or you know some satellite that is um so they so they have both possibly so here close up now is the anchor so that anchor pocket is very tidy very clean and that is the deckhands that's one of your jobs if you're thinking about being a deckhand yeah and you can see here you've got the portals on two decks here 
Um, it's possible that they've got crew on two decks, but it's unlikely. So the, the upper portals are probably crew areas, crew, crew lounge maybe, or it possibly even something to do with the guests. Um, but as you can see, the crew cabins are usually compromised because you can see they're fitted as the bow is, is uh, going inwards. So the, the cabins will be quite small, especially the one at the front there. These, these uh, windows up here, they're on a higher deck, so they're not portholes, they're regular windows. They'll be for probably, looks like a crew mess actually. Yeah. And then you've got the guest areas. So the crew areas are small in comparison to the size of a yacht. So you've got crew decks down there, some crew mess, crew mess there, and then that's pretty much it. And the rest of the boat is guest. So you can see they've got all kinds of different, you can see there's lines here on the, on the side of the boat. This is a, this is a um, uh, gangway that, that unfolds if they need it. Uh, they're using one stern at the moment. There's also one down there, a lower one. So, because you, you have them in different, uh, I'll just point it down. You have them in different places because depending on where you dock, the height of the key side is different, you know. So there's one down there as well. That's probably an extended one. It could also be where the pilot goes on. Let's see the name up here. Owner. Owner? Owner. I think I would say I'd go with Owner. This is a Lursen boat. So that's German. German built. These are my favorite because the Germans know how to build yachts. And this is, uh, this is where the cruise ships dock. So if a cruise ship was coming in, these boats would have to move. But they've been here since yesterday, so. Because the cruise ships couldn't fit anywhere else. And also the bigger yachts, OTA, uh, Serene and Luna, they would need to dock here as well, because they couldn't dock where the, where the Atlantis docked, because they're, they're just too big. So, this boat down here is Bodicea. Let's see what this uh, flag is. Georgetown. So, there you go. British Ensign. And then you can see there, there's a deck, there's a passerelle. A gangway that sticks right out and that would be if they if they were docking stern two which that which they haven't obviously they've got it out probably to get access to the boats or maybe to clean it i don't know and then here we've got bodicea this is a charter boat i believe so they it's a, obviously it's privately owned but they uh, charter it out, so they'll come here, and then some people will pay like, I don't know, 300,000 euros for a week. And then a crowd of them will come on, party, go out, you know, sail to a few ports, party and come back. And then that's why it all seems to be set up. Because normally when you come into port like this, all of that stuff gets taken down because the, because the owner's not gonna sit out there on a, on, a, on a deck chair when it's alongside and people are gawping at them because they want their privacy. So the fact that it's set up like that suggests to me that it's, uh, they're waiting for a tour, uh, uh, a charter to start.
it's nice to film actually and not have to worry about being told off for filming the wrong thing <laughs> which happens sometimes when you work on yachts in, in actual fact um, one of the things about working on yachts is uh, the privacy um, extends to the crew where, is when you when you sign when you go onto a new yacht you will actually sign a non-disclosure agreement which basically means that you're not allowed to publish on social media uh, where the boat is going to be or post photographs uh, inside the boat. Uh, there's very, um, very, very uh, private. So there's, I'll, I'll actually dig out an old non-disclosure, uh, some of the text from it actually, just to, just so you can see the kind of thing that you're not allowed to do. Anything about the owner or who the owner is even, like we're not even allowed if. If, uh, as a crew member, if you'll often get people asking you, who you know, when you go ashore, whose is the boat, or is it your boat, or and if not, whose is it? So I just make stuff up. I say it's Tony Blair or Michael Jackson's old boat or something. People believe you. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you're not allowed to, to tell people who who owns the boat, um, and you're not allowed, you know, obviously not allowed to give any personal information out at all. So. There's another antenna on the front there, up just above the bridge. That's probably a Fleet 77, which is an MRSAT unit, which is which will be for emergencies, and they'll have some phones on the bridge, uh, and also they can use internet on it as well. But it's extremely expensive. It's, it's usually sort of failover when you lose your regular satellite, but you, usually it's based just for phones, so the the uh, captain can call a port or something if they're too far out for VHF but they're rarely used and they're generally for emergencies. Uh, next to the antennas, you've got uh, two radar antennas. Uh, the lower one is a S-band, 2.4 gigahertz and the upper one is a X band and that's nine gigahertz. They mainly use the, they use both of them and they, they both have different features. The 2.4 gigahertz is the one that's used the most, I think. Um, the nine gigahertz is, is good for rain and also uh, if, you, um, if you're doing search and rescue, they have something called a search and rescue transponder which is fitted onto the, onto the boat and that, in, and that is interrogated by uh, the antenna, the radar antenna from a passing vessel. And they basically respond, they don't broadcast, but they respond to infiltration by radar. And that's at nine gigahertz, that's, so that's the X-band. So if you're doing search and rescue, you will switch to nine gigahertz to search for any boat. So if you get a call out on the radio to say that there's a, you know, a yacht in distress or a ship in distress and they've had to abandon ship, then they will, they will switch to nine gigahertz, and they will uh, and they'll look for the the signal from the yachts or from the uh, tenders or the lifeboats. And if they set them up properly, which is the first thing, the, the, whoever is in charge of the lifeboat, he will get out. He will once he once he gets everybody out and they get away from the sinking vessel, he'll erect the search and rescue transponder. So and that's how that's what the expander is for, mainly. Uh, it's, it's also used daily, but it's also, it also has a priority when it comes to search and rescue. That's the end of this video. I uh, hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe.